Hi, I'm Troy the Fishman. I'd like to cover a topic today that I sometimes get calls about in my business. People will phone me and ask, my power has gone out, what should I do? You know, now that we're in the springtime and there's uh, storms and such, sometimes you'll lose power and your aquarium may not have power for an extended uh, period of time. And so <clears throat> there are some things that you can do to help ensure the safety of your fish. So I'd like to cover some of those topics today maybe give you some ideas that could help you in case you get into that situation. So let's talk about some of these things. So as I said, the question people ask me quite frequently is how long will my fish survive without power? Now this is not an easy question to answer because there's several different factors that affect this. It's not a one-size-fits-all answer. So let's look at some of these parameters that will affect how long your fish can live without power and circulation in your aquarium. Okay, probably the most obvious one, okay, how big is the tank? Okay, and also what is the shape of the tank? If you have a large tank with a lot of surface area, you'll have better gas exchange at the surface of the water and the fish will live longer without circulation. If you have a tall narrow tank and a, or a smaller tank there's less surface area so those fish will struggle more quickly they'll run out of oxygen more quickly so a lot of it's going to depend on the size you know surface area per volume is what we're looking at here. Uh, another big factor how many fish? Okay because even if you have a very large tank, if you have 300 fish in there, they're going to run out of oxygen much more quickly than, say, a small tank that only has one or two little fish in there, okay? And it depends on the size of the fish. Obviously, large fish will take more oxygen than small fish, but it also depends <clears throat> upon the type of the fish. Let's say you have uh, high metabolism active fish like say tin foil barbs or tetras or silver dollars or fish like this they're, they're very active, they use a lot of oxygen they will struggle uh, sooner than say a catfish. A catfish just sits on the bottom he doesn't use much, much oxygen, he's just sitting there, he's not breathing that much so the size of the fish, the type of the fish, I would say the general rule is the bigger the fish and the more active it is the more oxygen it's going to use. Okay. Now another factor, a very probably the most important factor of all, is the temperature. Okay. When water is heated up, it holds less oxygen. So when people call me and say, "How long will my tank last without circulation?" You know, how long will it last without power? One of the first questions I will ask is how warm is it going to get in your house? What's the temperature outside? So let's say if it's 100 degrees outside and that tank is going to heat up, those fish could get distressed pretty quickly. But let's say this happens in November and it's you know 50 degrees outside, those fish might last two or three days with no power. It may not even be an issue. So temperature is so critical. And we'll talk about this in terms of what can you do about the temperature? Well, if your air conditioner is not working and your tank's not circulating, what can you do? Well, one thing you can do, open the canopies on the top of the tank to let that thing aerate a little bit more, okay? And also there's ways that we can aerate that water to get oxygen into it. If you're desperate, one thing that you can do, if that, if that water is really heating up and your fish are really stressing out, is you can use ice packs or you can just put ice directly into the water. Now, of course, you have to be careful with that, and it's hard for me to say exactly how much you would need. It depends on how much do you need to cool down the tank, uh, you know, how big is the tank, and what do you have available. You know, some people, I've seen people use just ice packs, those frozen ice packs that you can put in the water, and, and those will sometimes work. Or you can just actually go down to 7-Eleven or a place like th this and get ice, usually that doesn't have any chlorine or anything in it, it's just distilled water, and you can put ice directly in the tank. Of course, now this is a desperate measure if your fish are really distressed, that water's heating up, and it doesn't look like you're going to have your power restored anytime soon, okay? So 
I have saved some tanks. I had a tank one time. It had probably a hundred African cichlids in there. It was maybe a 90 gallon tank and their heater stuck in the on position and that water heated up to, you know, it felt very warm. I mean, it was, you know, I'm sure well over 90, 95 degrees and the fish were actually dying. They were starting to die. So I, this was a, a commercial facility and they had ice on hand. So the fish are going to die anyway if I don't do something. So what I did was I added to that 100 gallon tank about 30 pounds of ice, which sounds crazy. It sounds sort of desperate, but I only actually lost just a couple of fish because we got that water cooled down. We got that heater disconnected. This wasn't a power outage situation, but we got that water cooled down. And that's the most important thing because when fish run out of oxygen, they, they're going to die. So, you know, sometimes you have to do desperate things like that if you're in a situation like that, unfortunately. So now let's also talk about, now we know some of these parameters that we're dealing with here. How big is your tank? What shape? How many fish? What's the temperature situation? Okay, of course, how long will the power be off? You know, normally if it's a short power outage, you won't even have a problem because that tank will take a while to heat up. The fish, unless you're really loaded down heavily, they'll probably be okay. I would keep an eye on them. But in the meantime, let's talk about some things that you can proactively do if you're in a situation, let's say your power is out, your fish are starting to stress, you don't know when it will come back on. Let's look at some options of things that we can do to help preserve your fish. One other thing I didn't mention before I talk about stirring the water in the battery pumps, you can relocate your fish. If you're in a, you know, a bad situation where you don't know when the power may come back on, you may have a friend who has a tank where you could take your fish to or maybe a local fish store that you conduct business with. That's, you know, that's a possibility. You know, you could always relocate those fish. Uh, I would pack them in, uh, in buckets with lots of water or uh, maybe an ice chest or something like that. But of course you want to clear that with the place that you're taking the fish before you show up with the fish because if you have to bring those back, that's probably worse than just leaving them in the tank to begin with. But that's always an option too, uh, to relocate the fish. So let's talk about these battery pumps. This is a, just a simple little Penplax battery operated pump. And these are nice to have on hand and they can really be a lifesaver literally for your fish if you, if you have a power outage. This is a nice one because it actually plugs in and so if you're not home or something it'll turn itself on automatically if the power is interrupted. And you just attach this to a regular air hose with an air stone and uh, you know you can turn it on manually like I did here or as I said uh, this, this type you can just leave it plugged in and it'll turn itself on automatically if you're not there. Of course you need extra batteries on hand if uh, you know if you're going to be using these for an extended period of time. But those are really nice. Just anything to get the surface of that water agitated. There's kind of a misconception that bubbles actually put oxygen in the water. And that's really not the case because I'm sure it puts a tiny bit of oxygen in there. But the important thing is you can see how the surface is being agitated. That's where all the gas, you know, you have your carbon dioxide uh, diffusing out and you have your oxygen diffusing back into the water. It's that agitation at the surface that is crucial for gas exchange and that's what really gets the bulk of your oxygen in the water. So with these air stones I try to just make sure that they're bubbling as thoroughly as, as you can get them. So even if they're just a few inches below the top of the water that's okay. You, that's the key. Just get that water uh, agitated and moving around. Okay. One thing you can do, let's say if you don't have a battery operated pump and you have no means to get your electricity turned back on, you know, in the near future, you can just agitate the top of the water. And, you know, most of your gas exchange in an aquarium is going to occur where the water surface is. So if you'll just take, you can take a spatula or you can take a cup, it doesn't really matter, just uh, splash and agitate the top of that water and that will produce some gas exchange which will get some needed oxygen down there to, to your fish and, and if like this tank if it's a saltwater tank of course your corals need that too. So how often would you do this? 
Of course, I'm always watching the fish to make sure they're not stressed. You, you can't do this too much, but uh, maybe at least a couple of times an hour, just run by the tank and agitate that surface a little bit. Uh, like I say, use a spatula or a cup. You know, of course, make sure it's clean, doesn't have soap or anything on it. And, uh, you know, you'll get uh, good gas exchange just doing something like this. And this can buy you time to, uh, to get down the road and uh, help make sure your fish have enough oxygen. I hope that some of these things were, were helpful to you and maybe this is something that you could use in case you ever have a power outage with your fish. Uh, please subscribe to the channel and, and comment and let me know if there's any topics that you would like for me to cover in the future. I'm glad that you stopped by and watched the video today. Thank you.